Hi children, it's Grandma Carla with more of Freddy Goes to Florida. This is chapter 10. Now, as they went along, the weather got warmer and warmer. And so, they got up very early in the mornings and did most of their traveling while it was still cool. About 11 o'clock, they would stop under the shade of a big tree by the roadside and lie about in the grass and talk until late in the afternoon, and then they would go on for a while until they found a good camping place. When they came to a river or a pond, they would all go swimming. It was the pleasantest life you can imagine. One day, about noon, they were all sitting in the shade beside the road at the top of the steep hill. On the other side of the road was a house but nobody was in sight but a little girl who was wheeling her dolls up and down in a dolly baby carriage. Most of the animals were asleep, but Jinx, the cat, had been talking and nobody paid any attention while he talked. That didn't make any difference to Jinx, though. He went right on telling how smart he was and bragging about all that he could do. That was the worst of Jinx. He always talked about himself. If the animals talked about automobiles, he told how much he knew about them and how well he would run one. And if they said, let's go swimming, he told what a fine swimmer he was, although they all knew that he hated the water and couldn't swim two strokes. Today, he was talking about bicycles. Tisn't anything to ride a bike, he said. I've ridden them all kinds, bicycles and tricycles and velocipedes. And, oh, you're a wonder, said Freddy crossly, and all of the other animals who were awake said, oh, please keep still, Jinx. Alice and Emma, the two white ducks, didn't say anything. However, because they were always very polite and very afraid of hurting Jinx's feelings. They were almost too polite, if such a thing were possible. But they were just as tired of hearing Jinx talk as the others were. So Alice said, come on, Emma, let's go play with the little girl. And they got up and ruffled out their feathers and waddled sedately across the road and up the path to the house. The little girl was delighted to have someone to play with. And she put the ducks in the carriage with the two dolls and pretended that they were the neighbor's children and that she had to go look after them while their mother was out shopping and she pretended that they might catch cold, and she wrapped them up in a little blanket, and Alice and Emma were so polite that they let her do it, although they were so hot that they nearly boiled. Then the little girl said, Are you comfortable, darlings? And Emma said, Quack, quack. Oh, said the little girl, she can say mama. And Emma had to keep on quacking for quite a long time while the little girl hopped up and down and clapped her hands. By and by, the little girl got tired of this and said that she would like to take them for a ride. So she wheeled them down the path and out into the road. And then she saw a bright blue butterfly and ran off across the field after it, leaving the doll's baby carriage standing in the road at the top of the hill near where the animals were resting. Jinx was still talking about bicycles. I can ride backwards and with both paws off the handlebars and I can ride up and down stairs. Oh, stop talking such foolishness, said Henrietta. You couldn't ride a bicycle. Your legs aren't long enough to reach the pedals. They wouldn't have to be, said Jinx. I could do all that going downhill. Just start at the top and whiz, down you go at 60 miles an hour and... Oh, stop talking, ex exclaimed Henrietta. I never heard such an animal. Brag, brag, brag. That's all there is to you. You wouldn't dare ride down that hill in that doll carriage there. Ho, oh, said Jinx. That's nothing. That's so easy it isn't worth bothering about. All right, said Henrietta. Let's see you do it then. I suppose you think I can't, said Jinx. I think you won't, said Henrietta bluntly. Jinx got up and walked over to the doll carriage and climbed into it while Alice and Emma, beside Alice and Emma and the two dolls, why, it isn't anything, he said. It isn't anything at all. Just slide down that hill, poo. But it didn't seem, he didn't seem very anxious to start. Please get out of the carriage, Jinx, said Emma. There isn't room for all of us in here. Are you really going to slide down that hill, Jinx, asked Alice. Because if you are, I'm going to get out. Slide down that hill, said Jinx, and climb all the way back up again in the hot sun just to prove I can do it. Huh, 
I should say not. If they don't believe me, well, they needn't, that's all. All the animals had waked up by now and had come down into the road. You don't dare slide down the hill, they shouted. Freddy Cat, coward! And Freddy made a verse and sang it while he danced around the carriage in his hind legs. Freddy Cat jinx, his tail's full of kinks. He doesn't dare slide down the hill. See how he shrinks. Now, Jinx had no intention of sliding down the hill, which a good mile long, with a curve at the bottom, and he was thinking hard for some good excuse. But while he was hesitating, Freddie bumped against the wheel of the carriage and gave it just enough of a push to start it slowly down the hill. Hey, what are you doing, yelled Jinx, too frightened to jump. The animals stopped shouting and stood with their mouths open as the doll carriage gathered speed and shot away from them down the steep hill. They heard the scared quacking of Alice and Emma and saw their little white heads peering fearfully out. They saw Jinx holding on for dear life with all 20 claws as the carriage jumped and bounded from side to side of the road. And then it grew smaller and smaller and disappeared around the curve. The animals were very much frightened, and they started down the hill as fast as they could go. Halfway down, they heard a great noise behind them, and it was the little girl who had come after them, crying and sobbing at the loss of her dolls. And here is a picture of the ducks and the cat, and it says a very wet jinx was crawling up onto the bank. See the picture, you see the ducks down in the water, but Jinx does not like the water. That bad cat, she wailed, that bad wicked cat, he stole my doll carriage and ran off with my dollies. The animals waited until she caught up and Hank knelt down and let her climb up on his back and then they went on. Pretty soon they got to the curve at the foot of the hill. And then they went around it, and there was a bridge crossing a wide stream, and halfway across the bridge lay the doll carriage, upside down, and a very wet jinx with a bruise over one eye was crawling up out onto the bank, out of the water. And out in the middle of the stream, Alice and Emma were swimming about and quacking as if nothing had happened. When the carriage had turned over, it had been going so fast that the ducks and the dolls and the cat had been thrown way up over the top of the bridge and into the water. The dolls had sunk, and the cat had sunk too for a few minutes and had had a hard time getting ashore, for he wasn't much of a swimmer in spite of all of his bragging. But Alice and Emma hadn't minded a bit. As soon as Jinx saw his friends, he tried to look as if he had done it on purpose. There, he said. I guess you won't dare me to do anything again. I guess I did, did, did it, didn't I? I guess you haven't got much to say. But the little girl jumped down from Hank's back and went over to him and began slapping him good and hard. You bad cat, she cried. You bad, bad cat. Where are my dollies? And Jinx made himself as small as possible and put his head down between his paws and let her spank him. It didn't hurt as much as she thought it did. And if she and if he said afterwards to Freddie, and as he said afterwards to Freddie, it knocked all of the water out of my fur. But Alice and Emma dived for the dolls and brought them up and laid them on the bank to dry. And after a while, when the little girl was tired of spanking Jinx, she put them into the carriage again, and Mrs. Wiggins pushed it back up the hill for her. But the little girl rode on Hank's back. And after that, Jinx didn't talk so much. And if he did begin to boast, all of the animals had to do was say, Kidnapper, doll stealer, who got spanked by a girl. And he would curl up and pretend to go to sleep. <laughs> I guess that cured him of his bragging, huh? This is Grandma Carla, and I love you.